Greetings adventurers, I'm Lauren Gaming, and I'll be your guild advisor for this video. This time, I will be going over the new additions to the blacksmith menu, including rehammer, upgrade, and smelting, as well as how to get the materials needed for the process through the new crafting quest and a new dispatch quest system. In rehammer, you will be able to reforge your weapons or armor in order to reroll the equipment's primary status, physical attack, magic attack, or defense, in an attempt to get a higher value. You can also choose to re-roll the equipment's attributes in case you don't like the ones you currently have, or in the case of 4-star equipment, you don't have the maximum amount of additional attributes on the piece of equipment, typically up to a maximum of 3 different ones. When rehammering the status on your equipment, you will use up Secret Hammers, a new material that you can obtain from Crafting Quest and Dispatch Quest. When rehammering the attributes on your equipment, you will use up Mystic Bellows, also obtainable from Crafting Quest and Dispatch Quest. The advantage to rehammering equipment, rather than just remaking the equipment over and over again, is that if you happen to craft something with the max amount of attack, like getting 230 attack on a character weapon, but with undesirable attributes, you can simply just rehammer the attributes instead of crafting the weapon from scratch, as you might not see the 230 attack again. Now for upgrading equipment. This feature is rather self-explanatory, but all weapons and armor now have a level associated with them. The max level of your equipment is 10 times the star rarity, so 4 star equipment will start with a max level of 40. When your equipment increases in level, its primary stat increases. You can level up your equipment by consuming whetstones. There are small, medium, and large types of whetstones with the bigger ones giving more XP to your equipment. Whetstones can be obtained from Dispatch Quest, and if you're watching this video during the debutante event, you can purchase some whetstones from the event shop. The last new feature in the blacksmith menu is smelting. In smelting, you will be able to increase the star rarity of your equipment after it hits its current level cap. For example, when you level your normal 4 star desperate to level 40, it becomes eligible for smelting. You can use smelting stones to upgrade its star rarity by 1 rank, increasing the max level by 10. Note that some weapons like the Hestia knife can gain additional attributes upon smelting. The Hestia knife will gain 15% crit when ranked to 5 and another 15% when ranked to 6. Currently, this seems to be the only piece of equipment that gains additional attributes upon ranking up. Rank 6 is the highest star rarity, making equipment have a hard max level cap of 60. You can obtain the smelting stones required for smelting from Dispatch Quest, and currently the debutante event shop. You can also purchase 6 large smelting stones from the Sirius and Dolb shop every month. And that's the basic rundown on the new blacksmith features, Let's take a look at the new Dispatch Quest. To access Dispatch Quest, go to the rightmost tab on the Quest menu. In Dispatch Quest, you will send out your units on missions that take a certain length of time to complete, without you needing to actually play the game. You can simply send out your units on missions, close your app, and when the timer expires, open your app and get the rewards from the Dispatch Quest. Upon opening the Dispatch Quest menu, you will be welcomed with multiple quests categorized in the Morning Board, Night Board and Special Board. Morning Board Quest reset in the morning, Night Board Quest at night, and the Special Quest will unlock after completing 10 regular Dispatch Quests. On the quests themselves, you can see their details including a difficulty level, stamina cost, clear time, and how much longer you have to start the quest before it resets. On the left side of the screen, you can set the bell icon to on so your phone gets a notification when the mission is completed. The icon that says Quest with the refresh symbol shows you the potential rewards when you select a quest. Finally, tapping the question mark icon gives you some of the finer details of the dispatch system and also has a list of all the different kinds of quests and the rewards. Now, let's select the dispatch quest. You are brought to a screen where you can assemble a party to go out on the quest. On the right, you can see the different values that will affect your quest success. Advised status refers to the overall total of all the stats found on your adventurers and assist characters that make up your party. Note that the equipment does not seem to affect this number. So, this is completely determined by your character status boards. Advised skill point is the total combined level of your adventurers and assist characters. The absence penalty is the easiest to deal with. If you still have an empty adventurer or assist slot, this number will be a negative percentage. Just make sure you fill up the whole party. Those three values all affect your quest success rate. Below the recommended units, you can see the success forecast. When you get the above values all within the correct range and use recommended characters, this forecast will change to sunny. 
and more than likely, when your dispatch quest completes, you'll get a great success, giving you access to the second tier of rewards possible from the quest, like Iris, Herofauna, and Whetstones. Note that a big factor for great success is having all the recommended units. When planning out your dispatch quest, I recommend to make the parties for the more difficult ones first, as you'll want to keep your higher level characters in reserve for those quests. Remember that when you select a specific unit for a dispatch quest, that same unit cannot be selected for a different one. You can of course use different versions of characters in different quests, just not the same version. One thing I like to do when creating a party is hit the recommended button to start out my party with the recommended units, and then work my way down by selecting weaker versions of those characters while still being within the correct range for advice status and skill points. This way, you're only using the minimum strength required among your units for that great success, and can spread your higher level characters across different quests. Some of the quests, like the ones on the special board, actually don't explicitly show the recommended units, and you'll need to do some guesswork based on your knowledge of the characters and the universe. In this example, it hints that you'll want to use characters that are related to a pub. This should set the idea that you should use characters revolving around the hostess of fertility, like Ryu, Seer, Anya, Chloe, Lunar, and Mamma Mia. For the most part, you'll want to be doing all the dispatch quests you can, because whetstones and smelting stones are hard to come by, and it's a good source of other materials like Falda, Valis, and even Iris. And remember that every 10 completions unlocks a special board quest. If there is anything you are confused about with the dispatch quest system, you may be able to find the answer by hitting the question mark icon I showed you earlier. Finally, let's briefly go over the new crafting quest. Previously, the way to get crafting materials to craft new equipment was through Rampage. However, dispatch quests have replaced Rampage and crafting quests have been created and put into the boost tab as your main source of crafting materials. These cost one stamina per quest across all difficulties. Do at least every quest one time for the S clear Iris, and then really, you should only need to stick to very hard and EX for the crafting materials needed to make 4 star weapons and armor. During these quests, like previously in Rampage, you can sometimes fight irregular encounters on the second wave. In these encounters, you will fight blue bunnies that can drop items like Mystic Bellows for rehandering attributes, Secret Hammers for rehandering status, and Moonbow Gems, which you can exchange for character weapon crafting materials. So, to break down the ways to get new materials for the new blacksmith features, for rehammering, we have Dispatch Quest and Crafting Quest for Mystic Bellows and Secret Hammers. For upgrading your equipment, we have Dispatch Quest and the Event Exchange Shops as your source of whetstones. And for smelting, you can get your smelting stones from Dispatch Quest, the Event Exchange Shops, and the Serios and Dulb Shop. And that concludes my overview of the new blacksmith features and the Dispatch Quest system. I hope all of you found it a bit useful, and good luck on gathering materials to upgrade your equipment. It's going to help immensely for content like Record Buster and War Games. And remember, Tiona is best Amazon. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. To stay updated on what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord for any questions and discussion. Continue enjoying your time adventuring in Arario and the Dungeon. This is Lauren Gaming, and I'm signing out.